Hey guys, big old rattlesnake right here in my camp. He's a fat one. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this thing. Take it back to the ranch. I'll show you guys how we skin rattlesnakes and tell you a little bit how to take care of them. Man, that one's, I've killed a lot of snakes here, but this, this one here is, he's a pretty fatty booger. Never seen them with their tail up like that. Usually they're moving. I can't tell if that one's if he's if his tail's vibrating or what's going on with him. Okay, let me uh, take care of the snake and then I'll get back with you guys. All righty. Okay, so I got him back here at the house, sitting out front on my on my picnic bench out out in front, and you can see right here. I jabbed him with a stick because I was holding his head down and uh, trying to cut his head off with a knife. The thing is, is, see how he's still moving? I killed him 10 minutes ago and he's still moving. I mean, depending on the temperature, they'll do that for hours. What that is, is that's muscle memory. Strange. All right, I'll uh, start skin, skinning them and show you guys what to do, how to handle them and uh, what to do to take care of them. Okay. Okay guys. I'm back here I got my snake what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skin it now and I want to show you how to do that um, still moving there's a couple of different ways you can do this and of course knife is one way to do it but I actually like using just a little blade like an exacto blade or a scalpel blade and um, the thing is, is that you can do a nicer job. It's, it's a little finer. What you want to do is you want to flip the snake on its back. And then you want to go right down the belly. It won't really hurt if you... Oh, cut my finger. It won't really hurt if you go too deep because the skin will peel you want to stay as much in the center line as you can This snake's got quite a bit of meat on him. Need something, a little piece of leather or something to put on the back side of my blade because I'm cutting my finger up. Oh, well. 
little off center here, but that's all right. So I use these little double-ended blades, which I have in my survival pack because they make good arrowheads. They're not working very good, it's cutting the back side of my finger. So I did win a uh, mossy oak knife set uh, at a big buck contest, so I'm gonna try it out. Um, there are many ways you can skin snakes. I know guys that chop their heads off and they go with a little pair of scissors to go snip, 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 snip along the belly and do it that way. Um, uh, and you can use, you know, pretty much any kind of knife, but I, I, however, I like something sharp. I want something that's gonna cut good. Oh yeah. See, so see how I wanna cut into the skin of this thing? It, uh, still moving. It's all the nerves in the muscles, muscle memory. Going a little deep here, but that won't hurt anything. A lot quicker than using a blade, that's for sure. Yuck, God, I hate that. Okay. So, I'm ready to skin it. Basically, you just peel it back around the neck up here. See, it's a esophageal tube there. It's real simple. Just grab the skin. And grab the once you get it started grab the neck and then just peel it just like this I don't care what anybody says snakes are gross yaga okay where's the bottom here so around the orifice, you want to just trim on both sides of the orifice. If you can, go all the way down to the tail. Be careful you don't cut, break it. You really want your tail attached to your skin. This one is colored a little bit different than most of them I'm used to. There we go. Quit it. Blah. Okay. See how this one peeled down around the tail? Um I've only had, I only had good luck with it one time, but I was able to cut around the neck and get the skin started and peel the whole thing down. And then you go through the process that we're, we're going to do. And, um, you yeah, see, I got them a little tore up down here. And what you can do once you get them dried out, you can fill them up with rock salt and then carry them. Look at this thing. It's still moving. Yay. And uh, fill them up with rock salt, carry them around like a snake. It's kind of fun. So basically what you want to do, and the reason I'm doing this, it, the, the way I'm doing it, 
is because I don't have the supplies I need to uh, tan the snake. Now, normally, I would just drop it right in the jar, put the solution in there, and start tanning it. The solution you want is 90% um, isopropyl and glycerin. One-to-one -one mix and uh, enough to fill a, a pickle jar, enough to fill, put your, to cover your snake skin in the bottom of a pickle jar. And then what you want to do is you want to shake it up and get it all mixed up, the snake skin and the solution and everything and put it in a dark spot for about seven, eight days and go in there and mix it, you know, twice a day if you can, at least once a day. And then at the end of that process, you're ready to start the drying, drying process. <coughs> but so what you want to do is if you want to just, you know, gather up some skins before you do all that, you want to take it and wrap it, on, stretch it and wrap it on a stick. Yeah, I can feel this one's already wanting to stick on itself. Go the other way. That's a beautiful skin. Weird, it's kind of yellow. Never seen one like that here before. See, it comes out pretty wide if you do it this way. And um, when I was younger, I did used to, I did actually pin them to boards, and do all different kinds of things, and salt them and scrape them, and none of that worked. So what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to get it wrapped on the stick, and then I'm going to put it in the freezer until I can get my materials. And uh, then I'm going to start the process of tanning it. So what you can do is you can get, you know, half a dozen snake skins. You know, if you get them like one and then a week later you get another one and a month later you get another one. You can add them up in your freezer. And then uh, when you're ready, you can take them all out, thaw them out, and put them in your solution. I don't have the solution right now so that's partly why I'm putting this in the freezer but I also want to show you guys how all that works and uh, yeah this is uh, gonna be a nice skin it's kind of hard to get them spread out and spin them around the stick as you go I got quite a bit of a hole in this one because I didn't. I was out and about, and all I had was my pocket knife. I didn't have any way to kill the damn snake, and I hate throwing rocks at him and drop rocks at him because you really root him. So I took a big stick, and jammed it down on his head. Well, I missed his head because he he kind of was a little bit coiled up when when I was trying to dispatch him. I would have showed you guys that, but I don't know about the rules on YouTube. I don't really like killing stuff on film. So there's the snake skin right there. I'll put him in the freezer and uh, then I'll, I'll bring him out. And when I start the second part of the process, I'll show you guys how to, how to do that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like I said, uh, one to one glycerin and 90% isopropyl alcohol. <coughs> glycerin. Um, is a preservative and also you can find it at you know various places it, it, it's all over you might even find it at the grocery store I don't know and um, you know, if anything you can mess around and make yourself some some nice hat bands and or you know who knows wallet knife sheath you know recover your knife sheath now, this is a pretty good snake he wasn't real long but he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost eleven buttons. 
You know, my dad killed a snake here a few years ago, had uh, 18 buttons, and that thing was huge. For a rattlesnake, it was big. Now, the gopher snakes look real similar to rattlesnakes, but you can tell they're a little bit thinner in diameter than a rattlesnake is. Rattlesnakes are a little fatter, and the gopher snakes are much longer, but that one my dad killed with 18 buttons, it was huge. I mean, it was really huge. The biggest, big, one of the bigger snakes I've ever seen. But there's ton of, tons of rattlesnakes around here. If I just drive up the road, they're all over the road. You gotta be careful you don't run over them. And uh, the trouble is when you run over them, you ruin the darn skin. So this, this dumb thing, uh, he's, finally, he's finally stopped moving. He's moving a little bit. There's quite a bit of meat on here. Um, now, I've tried just about every way there is to cook a snake. And when we were kids, my friend, what he would do is he would wrap them up in many layers of tinfoil put some spices in there and some butter and he would actually throw it in the fire. And I actually found that that was the best way to do it because it came out the most tender. Uh, what you don't want to do is try to make rattlesnake soup or stew because all you do is make it tough. And um, people say, oh, it tastes like chicken. Well, let me tell you, it tastes worse than chicken when you do that. So you don't want to boil them. Frying them's okay if you can wrap them or put them in with some oil or whatever, but um, in all, all actuality, I haven't tried it, but I bet you steaming them would be good. If you could pressure steam them for a while or pressure cook them, that might work pretty good. I might uh, see if I can put him in my men grills and see what he's going to taste like. I haven't tried that. So anyway, uh, I think that's it for this video. Have fun with your snakes, be careful. I don't kill them for fun. I only kill them when they're, you know, like this guy was in my camp, you know, who knows, one of the kids come, the kids go down to my camp and play in my camp. And uh, I worry about that. I mean, when you come outside and you got a snake wrapped around the bicycle of a little, one of your little kids or grandkids, it's, it's time to start moving them out. And, uh, you know, you got to protect your family. So, okay, I think that'll be the end of the video. And this is Craig Rivers. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye now.